What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. As always, I am alone in this video today. Going to be doing the Raw review, the Raw after Survivor Series, uh, the most predictable one. Saying this again from the last podcast, it was really, really fucking predictable. Um, I'm not too happy with it, but we'll move on. Into Raw, and we opening up, obviously, with the new champ, Sheamus. Oh, my God. Everyone, get your pillows out. Just fall asleep already for the most boring champion in WWE history. Yes, I said it. He is the most boring champion in history. You can argue with me all you want. He's not the right champion. I've had more than a day to think about this, and I just... I, I don't like it. I hate that WWE went to the simple route and the predictable route, and they have Sheamus as the champion now, and I just don't like it at all. They should have. They could have done so much better. They could have had Kevin Owens as a champion, as their self-proclaimed number two heel that they said a while back that they want as the number two heel. Now that Seth Rollins, your number one heel, is on the shelf, why in the fuck do you not have the number two heel as the champion? I know he has the IC title. You can have him hold both. You had Seth Rollins hold both. Or you can just have Kevin Owens drop it to someone and have him be the main champion. What the hell? Why do you have Sheamus? Oh, my God. And this was decided two hours before the pay-per-view. So they're probably scrambling and couldn't figure out shit and just said, fuck it, we'll give it to Sheamus. Whatever. But they opened up the show with Triple H and Stephanie. Obviously, this is, everyone thought it was going to happen. They're going to come out, praise Sheamus, talk shit about Roman. Roman Reigns comes out. He talks shit about Sheamus, too, and then they make a match for TLC, which is going to be a TLC match at at TLC uh, for the WWE title, and it's going to be Sheamus against Roman Reigns. Whether or not it'll still be one-on-one, -on -one, we'll have to find out. There's still a couple more weeks left until the pay-per-view. Maybe Dean Ambrose will be added into it. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but yeah, that was the opening segment of Raw, and then... Uh, Right as Roman Reigns and Triple, or Triple H, uh, Sheamus were eyeing each other down and talking shit, we have Rusev return out of nowhere and kick, give a really gr crazy kick to Ro Roman Reigns right in the face. It actually kind of looked like he hit him. But anyways, he, R Rusev's back, gives him a nice kick, and then celebrates with Sheamus and then walks out with Sheamus. Does this mean Rusev is part of the authority now? Like, I, I can't tell. I mean, it only make it kind of makes sense. I mean, the authority is weak right now. They have really no one on their side as wrestler-wise. So, Sheamus and Rusev, I guess. Whatever. Whatever works for them. But, yeah, Rusev's back. And then Triple H books a match later on the night between Roman Reigns and Rusev. So, yeah, that would, be, that would end up being the main event. Um, moving on, we had uh, a pretty good... You know, it was an it was an all right match. Uh, the Dudleys against the Wyatts. I mean, they they could have done a better job of placing it in the show, but it was an all right match. And uh, the Wyatt family picking up the victory in this one. Uh, Bubba Ray getting distracted uh, by Bray, and then uh, as soon as he turns around, he walks right into a I don't even know is it called disgust clothesline by Harper. Uh, I don't even know what to call it, but Harper wins via clothesline, which is weird. I mean, I, I such I I know it. There's been clothesline finishers in the past, but I think they could do a better job with Luke Harper. But, uh, yeah, the Wise picking up the victory in this one. And then uh, after the match, the rest of the Y family killed the shit out of the Dudleys and, you know, followed the buzzards. So moving on. Uh, but actually, if I go back to this, I don't know what the Wise are going to do from this point on. Uh I don't know if they're going to keep feuding with the Dudley boys and then they have a tables match or something at the pay-per-view. But what happens here for the Wyatt family? I mean, Kane and Undertaker are obviously going to be kept off TV right now and they're not going to have a rematch to the Wyatt family. So who knows what's going to happen with the Wyatt family? There's too much talent there to be underutilized, which right now WWE needs to utilize all their talent with everyone being on the shelf. So moving on, we had... Uh, one of two Divas matches in the night, a crazy match. We had Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. Finally, we're, and I know my co host Brand's going to love this. We finally see Sasha Banks on Raw and getting some TV time. It's about fucking time she's getting some live airtime. Not on this SmackDown, not on main event crap. Um, she's actually getting some Raw time. Man, she's just so good. I don't know how WWE does not see the potential in Sasha Banks. Even in Becky Lynch as well. Becky Lynch is a great wrestler as well. Don't take it. I'm not taking anything away from her. 
But finally, Sasha Banks gets maritime, and it looks like they fi- officially changed the Team Bad theme song to Sasha Banks, which is awesome because she has the best theme ever. Way, way better than that annoying ass ear bleeding song Naomi has as her theme. But uh, Team Bad also had a new Titan Tron, so I'm guessing this is going to be the new theme, and I'm okay with that. I'm I'm 100% okay with that. But this is a pretty good match. Um, a little bit of a heel win for Sasha at the end. Uh, having her team help her win with a uh, roll up but uh whatever it's t- it's it's heel tactics that's what they do to win but uh good on Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch for putting up a pretty good match um after the match Paige appeared on the Titan Tron because Michael Cole was talking shit about Paige and then Paige defending herself and actually threw a pretty good promo uh talking about uh the the Survivor Series match and then showing that when Paige tapped out to Charlotte's finisher last night uh, Charlotte was under the rope, which is technically in WWE, a, this, uh, it shouldn't have counted. Like the, the match should have kept going on, uh, Charlotte should have had, uh, a count to five to let go of her submission. So Paige did bring up a good point in her promo and I'm not just being biased because she's my favorite diva. Um, she did put on a really good promo. Uh, and in that setup, uh, it was announced then that Paige and Charlotte were going to have a title match later on in the night, like a rematch. Uh, for the Divas Championship, so we'll get to that when that happens. Um, we do didn't they cut a promo of the New Day going to have an in ring celebration of uh, one year of their one year anniversary and an open challenge, and they come to the ring uh, with these those toy horses on sticks, but they're unicorns, and just oh you have to see it. You can't even explain it. You have to go and see this. Um, but New Day coming out, and it was probably they just put on such good segments. Like really, really funny segments, and they're just so. This is such a well put together tag team. I love it. So they're going on about the open challenge. Uh, the Lucha Dragons come out saying they want to accept it. The New Day is pretty much saying no. We're like we're we're not accepting your challenge. And the Usos come out saying they want a chance at it. And the uh, Lucha Dragons uh, suggest a triple threat match for the titles. And New Day basically cancels uh, the open challenge as uh, the Us, then the Usos and Lucha Dragons beat down the New Day, and that's the end of that segment. I would have loved to see a tag match on Raw, but I guess that didn't uh, quite happen. I guess they saved all that shit for SmackDown, and SmackDown is notorious for tag team matches. So, moving on, uh, we had uh, our other co- our co-host Brandon's favorite boy, uh, Mark Henry, uh, coming in as Once in a Blue Moon Raw match, uh, facing Neville. And, uh, it was said during the match on com- commentary that uh, Henry had a lot of respect for Neville and he thinks the kid's going to go far. They actually have a pretty good match. And then uh, Neville wins uh, <coughs> uh, via Red Arrow. And uh, Mark Henry, after, r- shakes his hand and said, like, good job, kid. You're going to you're gonna go far, which is awesome. It's a lot of respect. And Neville should uh, take that as, <laughs> like, you're getting... You're getting a pat in the back from one of the greatest perform, one of the greatest uh, big guys, big performers of all time. So that was a pretty good. It was all right match, but near the end it was weird. They kind of cut backstage to the Miz watching Neville, and they didn't really say anything after that. So maybe they're setting up a feud between Miz and Neville, which <laughs> like what the hell? Uh, you, you brought up Neville. He used to be the the NXT champion, so huge in NXT now to just jobbing in the mid card, even below mid card now. So who knows? Um, I mean, he beat Mark Henry. I guess that's a, a, a big step for Neville. But, uh, yeah, looks like a Miz versus Neville feud is uh, upcoming. So we'll have to see about that. Moving on, we had the primetime players in Goldust against Stardust in the Ascension. Um, basically a small rematch from the 5-on-5 five five Survivor Series tag match at Survivor Series. Um, this was an all right match. I mean, it was there's really nothing to talk about uh, other than Goldust making his raw return since the last time he left, which everyone thought he he was going to be done, and he even said that he might be done as well. But looks like he still got that last bit of energy in him. So moving on to after that, we had Zeb Coulter and Alberto Del Rio and Mex America come out and uh, talking to the crowd about Mex America. Yada 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 yada. Uh, Swagger comes out. And starts talking about them and how disappointed he is in Zeb. And uh, Zwagger hits the ring and Del Rio basically runs away with Zeb Coulter. So it looks like they're setting up the feud between Zeb Coulter and... Uh, or Zeb Coulter, uh, Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger. Which it only makes sense. You got uh, the Mexican with the U.S. title in Del Rio against Jack Swagger. And the real Americans. So everyone saw this coming. It was going to happen rather sooner or later. And you have Zeb Coulter, the former 
manager of Jack Swagger in Del Rio's corner. So I think they can put up a pretty good feud, I think, up until when John Cena comes back, and I'm guessing John Cena is going to come back for his U.S. title. Uh, moving on after that, we had the second Divas match. We had the Divas title match, Charlotte against Paige. This was a really good match. Um, it was really long. It was really well done. I think it was about 20 minutes long. You even had a commercial break in between, which you don't really see in Divas matches anymore. But uh, this is a really, really good match uh, between Charlotte and Paige. A lot of good moves back and forth. Um, I mean, it almost looked like Paige is going to win for a second. And then uh, they ended up having a double count out, which, uh, I mean, it, it was okay. Like, I, I hated it at first until I seen what happened after the match. Paige and Charlotte kicking the crap out of each other. Like, I mean, getting more personal. Like, this this is actually becoming a really good rivalry. And it's really well done. I'm really uh, glad that he's keeping this rivalry, not just ending it at Survivor Series. And then it kind of looks like this is going to set up a rematch at TLC for the title. Or maybe they're going to add Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. Who knows? Um... After the match, uh, to uh, Paige took off the announce table, the top part. So everyone in the crowd is being so surprised, like, "Oh my gosh, she's gonna like power bomb or do something to Charlotte through the table?" But she does the PTO on top of the table, and I don't know why. Like, I don't see the point of it. Uh, me and my co-host, uh, No Cell Phil, were watching it and saying, "Why did she even take off? Why did she just do that? She could have done it on the arena floor. Like, it didn't make sense that she went on top of the table. I guess just to make it look more vicious. I guess I don't know, but uh, I think we were thinking maybe she should have at least tried to su- or do a suplex to Charlotte through the table to make it more interesting. Um, but what other than that, this is uh, going to be a really good feud. I think uh, between Paige and Charlotte, we'll have to see what happens in upcoming weeks. After that, for some reason, Heath Slater came into the ring with a guitar. And before he could sing, he had Ryback come out, uh, shaking the ropes and doing this little Ryback thing. And Slater hits Ryback in the back with the guitar, sort of uh, Jeff Jarrett style. And then Ryback kicks the crap out of him. Uh, Really, really pointless fucking segment. Um, Why is Heath Slater getting this TV time at this point in Raw? Like, you're getting it. And you could have just had the Divas match followed by the main event. But why is Heath Slater getting this TV? This is the worst. I know like Heath Slater has been on TV for a while, but what the hell, man? Let's put him like a tag match or something. Not this. That was really, really bad. I know it's because they were in Nashville and all that shit, but uh, come on, like, I, uh, just a really pointless segment. I don't even want to talk about it anymore because it was really bad. It was really, really terrible. Uh, moving on, we had uh, Ziggler and Ambrose against Kevin Owens and Tyler Breeze. Um, this match was really quicker than I thought it was going to be. I mean, it was probably because of how much time left was in the show. Maybe didn't have that fucking useless Heath Slater segment. Then you could have had a better match, but it was really quick. Um, uh, near the end of the match, Ambrose dives through the ropes and takes out Breeze on the outside. Then Ambrose hits a, a rebound clothesline, hits Dirty Deeds on Owens, or uh, hits Dirty Deeds as uh, Owens was sitting on the outside and he was watching uh, Tyler Breeze the entire match. So, Whatever, I mean, it, it, Kevin Owens is still playing up to that heel ta- heel champion and prize fighter. So I, I'm liking what they're doing with Kevin Owens. I just really wish they would have extended it and had him win the WWE title. But that's just my opinion. But uh, the winner, Dean Ambrose and Ziggler. Um, again, those two superstars, I have no idea what they're going to do with them. Looks like they're going to continue the Breeze and Ziggler feud. Um, but maybe Ambrose will feud with Owens now because they put on a pretty good match at Survivor Series, so maybe we'll see an IC title match at TLC between Ambrose and Owens. And I'm not, I'm, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm re- I am really like both competitors. They're both great wrestlers, and I think they can both put on a really good match. Um, going into the main event, we had Roman Reigns against Rusev. Uh, pretty good match. A lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of uh, shit happened in this match. Um, uh, a lot of distractions and uh, shame is getting is getting involved and then Roman Reigns at the end kicking the shit out of everybody and King Barrett appeared in there. So you know what? It was just such a like clusterfuck of a main event that <laughs> really there's really nothing to talk talk about. I mean, after the match, ba- Bear grabbed the chair and uh, Reigns takes it and beats down Barrett and Rusev with it, and then Sheamus hits the ring. And then gets taken out with a chair as well. So like you, 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 got, you knew Roman Reigns was going to be built up pretty strong, or he's going to get the shit, kick, shit kicked out of him. But either way, it was just a really cluster fuck of a main event. And uh, I guess we'll have to see uh, what happens in this feud leading up to TLC's main event match. Um, I don't know how they're going to incorporate Rusev into this. Like again, I said, maybe he's joined the Authority. Um, 
or something like that. I, I can't tell, but uh, it's good to see Rusev back. I mean, you have a lot of people on the shelf right now, like Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, now Cesaro's out. Uh, like you have all your top guys, like John Cena is making the TV show. You have all your top guys like out right now. So you're going to need something to boost the ratings and to incorporate into storyline. Like even with raw with three hours, it's crazy. But other than that, that was it for the raw review. Um, and not, not nothing uh, been in news lately. If uh, anything comes up, I will put out a podcast about it. Other than that, guys, I am your host as always, the greatest host, Kyle Masters, and that's it. <laughs>